Hello everyone, I'm Overhaul and today we are gonna be doing the Battle of the Golden Dawn, Dawn War Annihilus. The usual disclaimer at the beginning of the video, I am not a kid specific channel. I do not aim at the young demographic, meaning that I will at some point say words that are too mature for them to hear. So if you are a child kid and not a teenager, teenager, I would seriously advise you not to watch my video since you will most likely hear the naughty words. And that's said, let's begin with the video. Now, some of you might be asking me, why am I making a military war analysis on the Battle of the Golden Dawn? Well, for one, it's a the Black Clover is in a war arc right now, and if we are going to have a war arc, we should be getting some actual military battles those, and those types of things in it. Instead of just a bunch of battle royales, which quite frankly is what we are getting currently in the story. But I'm pretty sure we are gonna get more actual military type tactics later in the arc since, well, quite frankly, the Diamond Kingdom pretty much proof that Tabata is capable of making military war strategies. So, yeah. Let's begin with this. Also, in case, you're wonder in case you're wondering, I am gonna make the battles between the Diamond Kingdom and the Clover Kingdom, since they were so also very militaristic, and I'm not gonna be making military analysis on the one that Asta fought in the beginning of the arc, as well as the whole one-shot domination of Xenon, because those were really mostly just a build-up for the strength of these captors. So yeah. We aren't doing that. So let's get into the battle for the Golden Dawn. Now let's go through the members first, the combatants. Let's go with the Golden Dawn. The Golden Dawn have, are consisting of around 15 team members. So well, that we have no idea exactly the number, but let's just say there was about 50 Golden Dawn members. Now since there Apparently half of the Golden Dawn end up dead in this battle. 25 dead, 25 alive. Makes sense. Then we have... Then we also have to discount two members, which will be Languis and Mimosa, since we have no idea where Languis is, and Mimosa was in the Heart Kingdom. We also will not include the Elf Quartet, since they did not participate in the, the battle, as well as we have no evidence they joined after the whole whole alpha incarnation arc. So there are also non-factors. We also have to consider the fact that Yuno will join the battle at a later state. An early state in retrospect, but when it comes down to a here, then uh, as soon as the battle be gone. Begin. So that's unfair. We have so besides Yuno we have Bonjits, Sangler, Klaus so, oh, Haman, Letois, and David. We could also put Belle in there, but she's more of an extension of Yuno. Know. So, yeah. We have them as well as a bunch of our members. As for the Spade Kingdom, now this is where the real first big problem with this battle starts with, and that's the fact that there are only three people from the Spade Kingdom. Which is Xenon, which makes sense, he's the sh one of the strongest, so it makes sense to have him in and confirm it. But that's not a problem. The problem is the fact he only bought Garrus and Foil. And they are both there to be only 40%, and from what we are to lead, led to believe, sounds like they were not underestimating the Golden Dawn. Well, not completely, anyways. Since Garrus in in the battle of states, oh, you guys are supposed to be the strongest guys in the, in the Clover Kingdom? Well, this sucks, I was expecting a little more, but whatever, I guess it makes sense. So yeah, if they Spade Kingdom was not exactly underestimating them, 
Why did they only bring in two? Why did Zina only bring Galarus and Foil? Now, Lanyarki even states that he should have bought someone 50%. And now, even later, we find out that being a Dark Disciple is not really that, oh my god, excuse her, only the most important of important have to get, since in the chapter where we introduce to the Vice, but we see the presumable Vice Captain of Black Balls, we see a guy saying, oh, I can't believe I was promoted to become one of the Dark Disciples. So unless if that guy is some unbelievably powerful individual, which I seriously doubt since he seems to be more like just like a like a very quick sketch, like maybe a prototype of Swenkin's design, if we're being honest. I seriously doubt that guy was I seriously doubt that guy was something big and special. Now the best we're gonna see him to to build up some other character. So why only bring Galarus and Foil? It makes no sense. Now, let's go through... Now, also, we have to consider the fact that we have no idea how the, the Xenon's group got into the Golden Dawn's base, since, you know, Golden Dawn is not exactly on the border. In fact, all things that we saw from them, they seem to be, well, along the middle portion of the Clover Kingdom. The... Um, not really, not really somewhere like close to the borders between the Heart or the Clover or the Diamond Kingdom, just somewhere, be, just that seems to be more the Purple Orcas base, honestly. Somewhere in the middle, maybe a couple, maybe a little above or below the noble part of the Clover Kingdom, but yeah. So there's no idea how they got there, but since neither of the members there seem to have any kind of ability, where well, I can't think the where well, they could have gone in. Also, we have no idea if he was a member or he was just, you know, just some kind of a outside force. Or maybe, maybe they just got a lucky way to go in. Who knows, really? So yeah, we, so yeah, we have no idea on how that whole thing's going. Now, the way we begin this battle is pretty logical, in my opinion. We begin with the older Golden Dawn members attacking the free and with a concentrated blast, which hit them completely. But unfortunately, Foil, Garoris, and Xena are too powerful, so that attack was basically worthless. Now, here is where the first problem comes in this melt. Well, the second problem, technically, comes into this war. As soon as the, the Golden Dawn saw Xena, Garrus, and Foil completely being okay with it. That should be what queued them up to run away. I understand there are some problems with it, that like, oh, the honor of the Golden Dawn or something. But let's be real. You are going to go with to war with the Spade Kingdom. Meaning you are, and you are already low on members and low on resources. I mean, the club, I mean, the anime pretty much confirmed that. In one of the most recent episodes. So why would you, instead of going away to get st stronger, to get more backup or something, to at least not come destroy the forces even more of the global kingdom, why would you just attack and then when you fire it's comp it was completely worthless, not just get away? It would make a lot more sense and the characters clearly should have thought of that. Now, Garo speaks doing it, and even they are kind of reacting in fear. Now, Sierra was able to get behind Garo's and use his stone magic. That's when really they should have just gone in the hell out of it. It makes almost sense, and how at least you could. I mean, Garo, you could make the argument they would have. It would be extremely hard because they'll catch up to them. But again, they sh should have clearly run away at that point. Now, the next problem we have in this whole military is the fact that the, the Spade Kingdom splits up. Now I get, Xenon is a lot more powerful than them. In fact, from what we've seen of him so far, he seems to be able to defeat the entire Golden Dawn base easily on his own. Oh, but... What well, doesn't make sense is Garros and Fuel. Since Fuel could use his mismagic to completely 
surround the area, cover every part of it, and then he could just attack from it, with guards also just attacking it because the person would be completely blind. Blind, and that would actually make it so it would be even hard to take them down. Or well, hell, if anything, Gunnar should be next to Foil, so Foil will not be damaged as much, much because Foil doesn't really seem to be much of a shield, if you know what I mean. So that whole spin up was clearly the doom for the two. It was an idiotic decision. Then after they split up, Yuno shows up and he fights Gunnar There he is honestly pretty logical in this fight where he's like, Alright, uh, let's see. Right, my first objection should be getting the ones who are just injured out of the way. They'll just be in the way and they could get killed if they're not killed already. So that strategy was a good strategy. It definitely showed that you know at least fix that from this entire yeah, battle. He seems to be the only one that actually does know military strategies. So he gets a bunch of members out. Then he fights Galois and then he defeats Galois. I would say that wouldn't have happened if he would have, if God always had full of backup, but that's an old whole horse. Then we get to see Foil and everyone else fighting. Well, there are many members to go on down. We see a couple of them be already beaten and a couple of walls. Then we see Foil just destroy everyone, and basically the whole thing is pretty much just destruction. Like, Foil was completely dominant. What we also find out is that Tua, I think that's how you pronounce it, is still around and she's not being a fear. But she cannot track, uh, knows where the Dark Disciple is, and she cannot use her at that since she's not that strong. Baraka Yuno shows up and makes enough of an opening for Tua to attack, get to foil, put him in the Atlas so he will not be able to use his magic, so Klaus could beat him. I say the Klaus's way of still being able to move after Foil's attack, which I'm going to assume he did more than once, considering the fact that there seems to be some gap of time. Gap of time. But that's besides the point. Point. So, now the whole thing was a very good coincidence, since I doubt you know was expected to be there or even knew about Foil's mismatch. So, that there was a pretty good idea that to, for the Tua to immediately say, Hey, you just open, give me an open. I you have to get there quickly. So, that was a pretty good strategy, and the whole Atlas was also great, and Klaus quickly reacting was good as well. That was good. Now we get to the final strategy with Xeno. There, it was pretty much a one side domination. Like, I cannot see anything they could have really done there. Again, if they ever had a chance to escape, they should have escaped as soon as the Dark Disciples in Force and Dark Troy and Xena invaded. They should have, as soon as they found out they attacked multiple at the same time, they should have escaped there. Hell, David should have thrown his dice to hopefully get a six in their escape so he, they could have a bad uh, chance. Which is something that I am criticizing David for doing because your entire thing is like picking your chance by the dice throw and yet instead of throwing the dice you just stare there in fear and scream Siren! That was idiotic. So yeah, Xenon completely de destroys everyone and basically so yeah he is the strongest. And as he confirmed it to all of us, yeah, the world that was screwed this battle couldn't have ended with a victory. Now the next, the only thing afterwards to mention is the fact that Bonjet still made the whole healing tree, I think it's called he Tree of Exedril, Exedril, which was a wise idea to heal a bunch of the injured members before he got taken. That was a wise decision by Bonjet and definitely a, a, more, a more capable thing than the entirety of the Space Kingdom's plan right now. Although, to be fair, Vonica is the least intelligent or, I would say, most childish person in there, so I guess maybe the strategies were affected by that. But, yeah. That was on itself. So, yeah. I could honestly, to God, not see how this battle could have gone differently for the Golden Dawn. I said, if they 
that's a sub accepted for part where they should have as soon as they found out they got a spoil and they attacked. They should just run away. Like that's the only way I can actually see the world not, not being completely destroyed. As for the Spanky though, I would say that they should have bought a little more numbers of people. Like maybe a couple of captains or maybe have another dog disciple or 50%. And definitely to stay together, so they have a more 100% domination, because, I mean, let's be real here. If, what exactly, because let's be real here, if Klaus got hit by Galarois, he would have most likely crumbled, and Lituas whole comp, uh, compass magic would not jump in as, as effective on Galarois. So if they stick together, they would have beat that them, and even after you do beat Galarois, uh, Foil could have immediately destroyed him using his missed magic or at least give up a, a good counter or make it almost impossible for you to win. So, yeah, this was my video on the whole bash judges of the golden battle to go down. You tell me, me in the comments below what do you think should have been the captain should have done. Do you think that they're speaking them were idiots for only coming with three members? Tell me in the comments below. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all the people next time. Bye.